All right, I think now we are live. Can you guys, can you hear me? Yes, yes. loud and clear. Good, 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 good. Thank you very much for joining. Huh? So I know long day. How's your work day, guys? Intense. Intense, yeah. Easy one, easy one. Uh, and also the commute, right? Uh, 50 minutes uh, in, the, in the Go train. Nice. Well, here in your phone, reading articles, doing nothing, just enjoying the ride, right? Actually, uh, um, I've been hearing a lot of, uh, how do you call the, I, uh, the podcast? Podcast? Podcast. The podcast yes. About uh, artificial intelligence. So uh -huh. I'll come on, on this. That's nice. I'm going to be talking about this stuff. What about you, Serge? Have you been using artificial intelligence in your job? Mm, not at all. Just my intelligence is not artificial. And I'm not sure if it's intelligence, but. I... <laughs> <It's what laughs> <you have. laughs> With this big head, probably like a lot of. All right. Okay, so we have people joining here. So I see already 10 people joining. So they're going to be coming slowly here. So basically. People may ask, okay, why those guys are doing this live in English? So reason number one, you are need to learn to this country here, either English or French. Secondly, that was an ask for some of my clients. They say, Michelle, can you do next time a live in English? So we have done in French, now in English. And that's why we are here speaking English. So if you are there with us and uh, you want to ask a question, maybe you are able to understand English, but not necessarily, you don't feel comfortable to ask in English, go ahead, drop a question in Portuguese, Spanish, French, and whatever. We're going to try to translate here to make sure you can be heard. So today here with me, so as the, the live was announced, so nearly a decade in Canada, so almost 10 years, I do consider you guys uh, very good friends in Canada. We have a lot of in common, but at the same time, we have a unique, very, very unique journey in Canada, right? The way we came, the reasons we came. And I hope people who are watching here, they know uh, who I am. So I don't need to make much of introduction. But at the same time, I want to open up the live here uh telling why I came and for how long I have been. And it's going to be kind of an example for you guys to introduce because they don't know you guys. That's going to be important. So reason why I came to Canada, I used to make uh, the same statement and people start continue to laugh over and over again. I came to Canada. The first reason was to be closer to my mother-in-law. So <laughs> Sorry. people, they, people, they don't believe it, but she was calling me back home. She was saying, hey, Michelle, it's snowing here. Can you come to help me? We're going to have a nice time together. And literally, we are having a very nice time for almost 10 years. The second reason I came to Canada is because me and my wife, we said, you know what? Why not have a plan B for our retirement? So we thought having two countries at the end of our lives would be a must, a must, would be a something that we can really enjoy. And as an, as an immigrant in Canada, I keep saying the same thing. We are always sitting in the two chairs, back home and in Canada. So, again, that was the second reason and mission accomplished. I do believe if everything continues to be in the way it is, two places. And third, the last but not least, I was thinking about a different future for my, for, for my son. Not necessarily a brighter or better but something different that I had. And I do see that Jesus well has been accomplished and uh, he's enjoying Canada. Those are the three reasons I came to Canada. I have been in Canada for almost 10 years, but it feels a lot more, like 20 years already. I do believe because the things we do, the culture that we embrace, so we don't miss much home except our families and friends, of course. And I know Marcos is very attached to his soccer team, Serge as well, perhaps. Those are the things. But this is not a nutshell. That's why I came to Canada. What about you, Serge? Introduce yourself, please. Oh, hello, everyone. Sergio here. Uh, I think the reason I I always wanted to live abroad. Uh, I lived in the U.S. when I was like 
20 years old, 21 years old for like six months. I have family there. I have uh, uncle, aunts, cousins, New York, Miami, Orlando. I always, always wanted to live abroad. But the U.S. is kind of hard because you cannot work. You got to work illegal. And then so I waited. And then at some point I said, OK, Canada is opening the doors. Uh, it's let me provide to my family a better quality of life, more safety. Uh, and again, let's try to do something different. Let's grow. I was tired of Brazil. I was tired of my job there. And I said, why not Canada? And when you think about Canada, it's funny because every single thing like reminds you Canada. You're walking on the street, you see like a, an advertising about Canada. You're listening to the radio, someone talks about Canada. And then you talk to someone, oh, I know someone who lives in Canada. And everything was leading to Canada. So I started planning and then I decided to come and I just put everything through to me through like I left everything behind and I came. That's that's what well, the way it happened. For how long have you been here? Uh seven years and a half, a little bit more, a little bit more. Yeah, almost eight years. And then uh pretty happy here. I don't intend to come back right now. If you ask me do you want to come back? No. I miss my family. I miss my friends. I miss the social life of Brazil. I'm from Sao Paulo, but I definitely I wouldn't live there. Uh, no. It's always what better to be far away from the weather. What about the weather? Do you miss the weather? Yeah, I miss that too. But again, at least here in the winter, we can have fun. We can have play with the snow. And we can have ski and we can do, do those stuff that we can do there in Brazil. I don't mind the cold. It's just too long. That's the problem. Hey, Marcos, I do see Sergio's face is happier be far away from mother-in-law. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's good. Uh, Sergio, you're going to be talking about what, how did you land, land here in Canada? Because one of the main things of this live is to explain the three different unique uh, journey in Canada. Just hang with, uh, hold with us. We're going to be there. All right, Marcos, what about you? Uh, yeah. Was barbecue or what? What did you make you to come? <laughs> Yeah, uh, so Marcus Romberg uh, came here because of uh, my job. Uh, I used to work in a, in a big company in, uh, back in Brazil, and they they provide you a mobility program. And you, I was supposed to come here and stay for live here for two years, and then go back to Brazil. Uh, ended up extending for six more months. And uh, we decided to stay, got, got the PR uh, in the meantime, and then got a job offer from another company, then uh, decided to stay. The funny, uh, fun fact is that my wife, Carla, she, she didn't want to come, right? Uh, but uh, after a while, she, and mainly because of the violence, I would say, uh, we used to live in, in Rio, and mm -hmm. um, we have two daughters now, but at the time, we only had one daughter. And we decided to 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 come to Canada and experience, and we ended up like loving it, and decided to stay. And uh, one of the major factors is my wife Carla. She really wanted to to stay. All right. I hope she's not watching here because if you say something badly about her, you're gonna be in trouble. Oh, yeah. But let's take a chance that uh, you start talking about the way you landed here, and it's a very unique way of landing. So explain more a little bit for the folks who are watching us, because uh, Great Snipe as a company, we have different type of clients. There are a lot of people they are reaching out to see how can then uh, increase their chance to land a job offer while they are back home. That is exactly what happened to you, but you are already working a company. So would you mind sharing a little more? So the, the program itself, you came and the pros and cons and they're going to get from there. Sure. So, yeah, I think much easier to come uh, in a program like this because you have all the support, uh, not only uh, uh, financial support because you already come with a wage, with a salary, but also with a company that was uh, providing uh, the, the, the landing support. So I had like two weeks in an apartment downtown while I was looking for a house. Uh, I had a, a person that Picked, up, picked us up at the airport, took, took us to the to this apartment, to this condo. And then uh, next day, the person came and brought us to the 
all, to take all the documents to, to uh, apply for all the documents here and then look for a house uh, so it was much easier I, I would i would say and for sure also financial i got like a, an allowance right and it was was a really uh, good experience and all right so two, year, two years i was supposed to, as i said because i was supposed to go back to brazil and we decided to stay Okay, so one big pro that's the, the fact that you landed with a lot of support. Yeah, a lot of support. All right. So does it mean it was easier than landing with a job? No, uh, not at all. I think they're like uh, I think there are like if I would say like three main challenges that I, I recall. The first one is the language. You know, like uh -huh. even even like with uh, in Brazil, great English like uh, take all the tests and oh, you you speak English fluently. When you get here, you find out that you have a way to go. Uh, and and to be honest, like I was even like taking private classes and in the class, the teacher was like, yeah, you, you're gonna learn uh, by experience, by, by uh, 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 living the life here and having the, the um, uh, uh, contact with, with the language, right? There are a lot of, especially the professional like i think for chit chat or day to day it's easier but when you get to like a job or so a professional language then is is harder the second thing i would say is the culture culture is harder <laughs> because coming from brazil uh it's like very informal and people like try to make friends uh and and get, get a lot of fun take a lot of fun out of the the job here is more like uh, job focused uh, and everybody gets to the job to work, deliver whatever they need to deliver, then go home. And it, like just two fun, fun stories. So my first week there at the, at the office, the guys mm -hmm. came, oh, let's grab, let's grab food. So oh, nice. Yeah, let's let's go to a restaurant. Let's sit down and let's have lunch. And then we, we went to the path and then to a food court and said, yeah, grab whatever you want, like sandwich here, fish there. And so I grabbed something. Let's go back to the office. I thought, OK, we're going to have lunch in the cafeteria together, right? When we got to the elevator to our floor, to our, mm -hmm. like, OK, have a nice day. Thank you. Bye. So <laughs> basically, the, we, we were supposed to go back to our uh, desks and lunch while we were working, because at 4.30 or 5, we're supposed to go go back home, right? To to stay with your family. And mm -hmm. just one more, very interesting. Like they, they invited me for a beer, for a beer. So I said, yeah, let's do it. One or two? Yeah, yeah, a beer. A so beer. <laughs> sat down, had one beer, and then everybody uh, stand up and start running to to catch the train or the subway, whatever. So it was literally like one beer. So these are the, the cultural stuff that you, you get used to. It. Mm -hmm. And the third one, I, I would say that, so it's financial. Uh, even with the, mm -hmm. all the support that I received financially, right? Coming with a, a salary and uh, 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 some money in my pocket, you don't have credit. And all the cash flow that you prepare, that you're forecasting to come here, it's wrong. But always increase. Uh, to be honest, that's the, the tip that I give everybody that I talk mm -hmm. to planning to come to Canada, especially now that uh, prices uh, have uh, increased uh, a lot. Okay, let me go back a little bit about your the way you landed here, because as you were speaking, um, Serge was making a, like a, a funny face, you know, sense that this guy had a very easy life by way, landing here with a job. Way, way easier than you, were, right? Way easier. <laughs> yeah, so... I certainly may not know the, the, the behind the scene marks when it comes to your job and the way you, you land as a senior guy, because we do have clients, they are senior, they speak English in Brazil, they can deliver the job, but by the time you come in here, explain a little bit more where you feel that seniority as a, as a pressure in your shoulder. So, for example, based on your experience right now would you be better for you to land with a job but perhaps with a position like intermediate and grow as you go towards senior what do you think about it yeah like 
now uh, going back to my experience because of the language and the, and the co cultural barriers mm -hmm. i think would be easier for sure if i like step down one one level right uh or if i if i was younger you know already not as a senior manager but like mm -hmm. as a, a senior consultant uh or a, like a manager would be much easier because then you don't face all the pressure and especially with the language like to, they expect you to hit like come and and, and start uh, delivering everything right hit the like, ground running yeah exactly and you you get to the meeting especially over the phone and you you, you can't understand everything you can't you, you simply can't so it, that's that's hard communication is a big barrier Barrier. Yeah, big barrier. And uh, on top of that, I do know some of your jobs that you have done in Canada, there was a sales portion. Yeah. So how to convince people, how to deliver, convey the message. So yeah. tell more about it. Yeah, and networking. I think when you when you uh, raise, like uh, uh, start your career or study, I, I, I haven't studied here, so uh, it's hard for you to make uh, friends, right? that will become like senior people and will help you to sell stuff right to sell services and mm -hmm. that I, I developed uh throughout the years in brazil and when i came here it didn't have it right because I, I was starting my my career as a senior guy and i needed to sell where's my networking so what i would recommend that's not impossible it's like have you seen that movie say yes for everything uh-huh so just say yes for everything like go to every single uh, every single uh, uh party or play soccer do whatever you can to meet people to uh, uh make friends so in other words for people who are watching us here the, the i think the device we're trying to say here or the story we're trying to share is it's good to land as a senior but with zero reputation like a beginner the reputation history networking it's better to maybe consider stepping down that's going to mm. make it easier going to have a more uh, you know smoothly progress as you go one more question to you marks because that's a question i get from from clients as well did you feel by any means stuck in the same job because you moved they helped you there were moments where you say you know it would be better if i have my freedom to play and uh, work for whatever i want yeah so since i went i came here uh with my my uh, not as a pr my con my job contract was only with one company so mm -hmm. i had to stay with this company and it was kind of like yeah you 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 uh we're we're, we're gonna stay with you but not a lot of challenges but uh because you're going back to brazil so you kind of get stuck because you can't go and look uh, look in the mm -hmm. market right for a new opportunity or in, in internally it's hard for you to get new opportunities as well and uh, the reason i ask this question because i want to now connect to sergio's story because sergio listen there are a lot of folks outside of canada they know how much it costs to invest in a college and they do their best there are people reaching me michelle making my profile be so attractive that I can get the job offer from where I am because I want to land as a with job as Marcus landed however a lot of companies in Canada they go outside because they want to they want to find cheaper labor so sometimes a guy that could make 100,000 here per year that's just a you know hypothetically here I'm going to mention 100 they go outside, they offer to, to this guy 60, 65. The guy is super happy. I'm going to land in Canada, my safety net. And they land here, they see the cost of life. They see all this stuff. And they maybe has to stay two years with that specific company. Perhaps the best bet would be buy a college for a wife or a wife for a husband. He's going to get here. Get the job right away, make 100,000 from the get go, especially if he relies on some expert that can guide him toward the market. So, just a kind of introduction because we want to really hear 
your story behind college and I wanted to give not the bullshit, not what people say about, because there's a lot of information already. By the way, I need to uh, uh, highlight here that nowadays with ChatGPT, artificial intelligence, people, they have the idea that knowledge solves every single problem. And there's a big gap between knowledge and experience. And you have the experiences with college. Now the floor is yours, my friends. Tell me this Sounds story, good. college journey. Go ahead. Yeah, I came here uh, without knowing anyone. So I decided to come to Canada in December. I, I was here in May, end of May. And I came through college. So to in, in order to get the, the uh, visa, I, I joined a college. So I got a student visa and a work visa also. And it's expensive, but uh, there's the pros and cons. I would say in, back in Brazil, I had the university. I had the, an MBA. But when you came to Canada, your education from outside the country, they don't care. You could be a doctor. You could be a PhD, whatever. They don't care. So having a college here, a post-graduation course here, it counted to find a good job because I studied here. I've done something here. Is expensive. Yes, it is. And you do have different courses, good courses, bad courses. Uh, but you say, okay, but I'm going to do a network with Canadians. No, I think 99% of the students in my college were international, were foreigners also. So it, there's people from all, all, all around the world. And But again, it was good for my language. As Marco said, you think you have a very good English, but uh, your fluent English in Brazil is the books on the table. When you come here with the books on the table, you see it does not work. So you struggle to understand, you struggle to talk, uh, you struggle to understand. Mm -hmm. So the college was a very good uh, thing. Uh, even like you got to do the presentations, you got to present to the class, to the teacher. So it was, was very good. So I think those are the, the pros. Having a, a course here in Canada and also creating your network. On the other hand, I didn't have a job. Cost of life, like everything you plan through uh, uh, blogs, through internet, uh, it's not the reality. You you come here saying, "Oh, I'm gonna expend X with rent." You expend X Y. It's, everything was way 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 more expensive. As Marco said, you don't have credit. You have to pay everything cash they don't have this oh, okay we do 10 installments for you you can do it in 10 times and pay monthly no it's all cash yeah, they don't so, finance anything you know? yeah in order to get my rent when i got here uh, I, I came alone first the first month to find a place should my family stay i came with mm -hmm. my wife i stayed in a room airbnb room for a, a month I got to, to do all by myself, no help. Like uh, I got to find a, a person, a realtor to show me the apartment, show me the houses, go after the documentation, go after every single thing. And again, to get my rent because I had no credit, I got to pay six months in advance. So you're paying six months in advance. It's lots of money. So now it's 12. Yeah. Now it's 12. So you you got to have a cash flow and in order to, to survive. And I had no job. Again, I had no job. Okay, I have a work visa, I can work. But because I was a student, I just could work part-time, 20 hours mm -hmm. a week. So my wife, she got a full uh, open work permit. She could work regularly, but again, she didn't have a job. The English was not that that good thing. Mm -hmm. We were just here. And I have funny moments too, like I, I, without work, but I go into the market, I have three kids. So the grocery shopping is huge. And then you don't have a car. And then you buy those little carts to bring your 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 groceries home. And when I had the cart pretty full, getting out of the bus, and one of the wheels of the cart just dropped and started going downhill. And I dropped the cart and go running after the, the wheel. <laughs> it was something. Not, not to mention the winter. That was the winter time or what? No, thank no. God. No. <laughs> But, uh, but again, yeah, it's a lot of things and the language, the culture is something different. I, again, I think I adapted myself pretty well here. My kids too was pretty fast, uh, but it, it's different. You don't have a support. You don't have uh, you don't have uh, like a family member that you can say, oh, can you stay with my kid tonight because I got to go find a work or because I got to do, do something. Then you start knowing people, other Brazilians, and you start creating this uh, 
net to help you out. But again, uh, I would say it was very expensive, the college, but I, I, I try to see as an investment. And then, uh, and another thing that I would say, like whenever you, you come here, I, I, my first job was entry level. I had like more than 20 years experience of uh, general manager back in Brazil. And when I came here, I was no one. So you got to start from the beginning. I could, could just work part-time. No company will give you like a great position part-time. It's hard. You're just going to work 20, 20 hours a week. So you got to start from some place. You got to pay the bills. So I started entry level, but, uh, we Brazilians, I can say we work hard. We work under pressure. And here, there's no pressure. The pressure is different. And if your time, like the Canadian, the Canada guy works from 8 to 4, there's 4 p.m., he drops down his pen and he leaves. We stay over. We go the extra mile. We deliver because we are used to. Like in Brazil, you, you listen all the time. If you don't do it, I'll find someone who will do it and you're gone. So back home, the pressure is hot. Here, the pressure is cold. Uh, yeah, pressure. definitely. So I got to say, after I finished the college, I became full time and I got promoted twice in one year. So there's lots of room to, to, to grow, especially knowing that we put the work in. And I would say here in Canada, I found that it's way easier to do career transition. So I used to work in the financial uh, system by strategy financial and here I'm not working with that I completely changed it the twice the, my 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 job and and one thing that also I think is very very good when it was come and fresh and starts from the bottom language wise as Marco said I was in a meeting a senior meeting in English I could not understand everything when you start from the bottom people were well, like your boss, your manager, since they hire you, they were way more under, understanding about your language. You're not from here. You're 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 learning, so there's not that pressure on your neck to deliver and understand right now and hit and run. You know. So, all right, let me go back a little bit here because we have some questions in the comments in the chat. So, have Nunes here. He was kind of impressed with uh, the way you did to handle everything and keep the family. So he's talking about financial aspect here. Yes, Canada is much more expensive than when we landed, but I think that's everywhere. So yeah. inflation is hitting every single corner in this country. I keep saying, of course, I really love Canada. I keep saying, no, Canada is not the best. It's not the same as before, but what else is better than here, right? Yeah. I think the key from your experience from Marcos, from Sergio, and now I have Nunes talking about as well expenses and this and that, Financial plan, you'll be a key factor in your immigration if you want to come to Canada. I would say, for all means, I would say if you're coming here, you have, uh, you have, uh, you gotta have a budget for at least 18 months. At least the, the, the best would be 24 months. I believe in six months you can find a, you can find a job. Again, we have plenty of job, but again, at the bottom, at the, the first step of the, 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 the the, entry the, level jobs yeah yes. okay, they are the rage and yeah, isn't you, that you can work and then like you can find work pretty pretty fast but if you are a manager in brazil and you want to find a job as a manager and you just landed here it's going to take a while because you don't have the canadian experience that, that they want you yeah. so, okay i mean let i can ask, ask you here let me, quick, ahead, quick, you just just mention one thing so uh about my experience right because in the entry level, you're going to be competing with a lot of like international people, right? That also landed from other countries. And you are in a more like a senior uh, level, you're competing more with the Canadians. So mm -hmm. that's another thing that you got to take into consideration as well. Absolutely. And I'm going to take, I'm going to take a chance to make a comment on that when I talk about my own experience here. But Sergio, before, before I go to me and talk about a little bit how I landed here. So an important question that people have when they think about college. So what made you to go college instead of applying for a immigration skilled worker from back home? Question number one. Question number two, for people who decide to come with college, do you suggest then to take one year college, two years college? What is the best approach you think? So first question, uh, if I applied from home for a skilled work trader, whatever, I needed to wait in Brazil until I get the 
the permit and it could take one year two years three years i don't know like uh when i can since i came doing a college i got my work visa and my student visa right away i could wait here in canada and then apply for for the permanent residence or whatever so i was here so doing start building my life and creating my network and and doing everything that I needed. So that's one difference. And uh, second question, sorry, Michelle. Can you repeat second the question is about uh, how long should I buy my college? Oh, yeah. Okay, so I, I'm not sure how are the rules right now. I, I finished my college like five years ago. Uh, when I came, the best was two-year college because when you finish your two-year uh, two college, you can extend your visa, your work visa for more three years, up to three years. No, so no you're gonna be covered for five years so uh this needs to be a public college if you go to a private private college it's cheaper way cheaper but uh, you cannot extend your visa after mm -hmm. uh and uh, i believe if you do a one-year college they just give you a uh, one-year extension of your work permit so i'm not sure how are the rules right now i, I know it changed it like i know uh a while ago with the, the student permit, you could work full time. Looks like they changed it now again to like the only part time and twenty hours a week. So mm -hmm. you got you got to change according to the economy. Yes, I do know that. So, okay, one thing here that's uh, I just replied there, Noon, is that I took us around five years to get settled here in Canada because of different situations, this and that, and I I consider five years a, a really a, a milestone in Canada. Before five years. I don't suggest nobody to make final decisions. Say, you oh, know, Canada doesn't work for me. Or in three years, you say, you know what? I have enough. So I have seen the most successful immigrants is when they cross five years and they really look back and say, yes, worked. And but Michelle, what do you guys think about? about no, as you said, I would say the first two years are the most difficult ones. Yeah. If you go through those two years, the third one is start improving and the four is better. When you reach the five, you kind of uh, reach not uh, stability, but uh, you are way more balanced. You know where to uh -huh. go. You know who look for in, 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 in uh, any emergency. You create your network. So I would say the first years are the most challenging ones. Yeah. And, right. and well, boy, Marks. Well, officially, uh, five years is considered a newcomer. Mm -hmm. So until five Good years, point. you're, you're considered point. a newcomer. So even them, they, they know it's like proof that five years is the amount of time that you need to settle. Yeah. But listen, guys, for those who are watching us, don't just sit and, and enjoy five years. It's five years of hard work yeah. to see if you're going to make it. OK. And now I'm going to take a chance that Mark's mentioned a super important point related to, to who you're going to compete. And that has about that has something about the way I landed. So as I landed with my PR, permanent resident so a lot of expectations on me already mm -hmm. starting from another easier way jeez yeah shame on so, you <laughs> yeah so my mother-in-law for example she expects me she's gonna land here's gonna find a job right away and then life is good <laughs> right so the second thing is you land in a situation where you are uh per document you are the same the same platform the same shelf as Canadians however doesn't matter how you landed you're gonna always struggle with money history a little bit less of much less than you guys who doesn't have the PR when landed but it's still if you don't have savings you still need that 18 two years that uh, Sergio was talking about for you to get settled right otherwise you're gonna be spinning 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 and you don't see the 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 light at the end of the tunnel so i do remember i thought i could compete with canadians right away but again english was a problem and i was speaking english for almost 10 years before i landed here so english number one i think that's there is no question for for all of us but in summary sergio marcos and uh, myself so i do believe that at the end of the day everybody's gonna end the same place no matter how you landed what decision you took, at the end of the day, we are going to be celebrating the same spot. So do you guys agree with me? 
I do, I do. I think the, the, the race can be shorter for one, longer for another, but uh, yeah, you're going to be in the same exact spot at the end of the day. Yeah, I okay. The other thing that I used to suggest people is don't compare Serge with Marcos, Marcos with Michel. Each of us has the unique journey. So we need to concern about our pace. Are we progressing the way you would like to? Don't look us, don't look beside because there's always somebody better than you, somebody doing worse than you. And it's, so, it's not about this, Michelle. Like Marcos, when you apply for your PR, how long does it did it take to come? Three months. Mine. Uh, mine no, 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 uh, yeah, for the PR. Mine took yeah. 18 months. So look the difference. He applied, I applied. His PR took three months. Mine took 18 months. So every yeah, every person is a different person. Every case is gonna be a different case. Okay, now let's talk about another big subject that Sergio mentioned there. I want to make sure I, I, I can talk to you about it and also Marcos because I do believe he has experience on that as well. Kahir transition. So you mentioned that it be, was much easier for you to do the transition, Sergio, than doing the same thing you were doing back home. So why did you think about it and did you have any help to make that transition? I'm going to start with Sergio and after Marcos. Yeah, I, I think here is easier because they, uh, the higher managers, they look a lot of uh, through your soft skills. And it depends on what you're looking for, of course. You're not applying for a director level or whatever. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you do have the soft skills, you can learn. And yeah, I did have a help. Uh, Great Snipe was not here yet. Otherwise, I would, would have helped the uh, Great Snipe for sure. Oh my but god, thank you. helping me out with uh because I I was I did my resume, I did my cover letter, I was applying for 100 uh, positions every day and I was just hey thank you for your interest but it's not 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 going to help. And then I I looked for a person to help me with my resumes, to use the right words, to use the right uh uh statements on the resume and then i start applying and i start getting results and getting the interview so i strongly recommend you to uh get someone to help you preparing your interviews preparing your resume giving you tips so and it's what the great snipes doing right now it's helping people because i, I know there's lots of people that i already came to canada through great snipe and they got a their desired job through michelle's help so I strongly recommend. And again, at the beginning, I was very reluctant and say, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to spend this money. I'm throwing the money away. Why am I doing that? Right now, I'm so glad I did it. It's a very, very investment for just a little money. If you if you think uh, like about it, you're getting your job you want. You're getting uh, recognized working in a good company. Uh, it definitely It definitely pays out for sure. Yeah, no, I, I don't blame people when they land here or they are about to come. They think, you know what, with EI now, I can do my resume. I can create my cover letter. I can, we can do a lot of things. I've been studying for a product, big product next year. And uh, I was watching a live. The guy was saying, they want to see if you agree. He said, you know what, EI is not going to replace us. But you're going to be replaced by someone who knows how to use EI. Yeah. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I do. Well, uh, even like uh, I, I was uh, listening to the podcast about AI, and when mm -hmm. they they uh, launched Ch uh, ChatGPT, uh, the schools, the school board from the US said, no, we, we they can't use, the students can't use it. But later they realized that they cannot stop the progress. So they came back and said, yeah, we need to help the students to understand how to use it because that's a new tool that they 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 will need to learn how to use, and whoever knows how to use it will have a big advantage in the future. No, it's a funny, it's a funny thing regarding that. Like when I was doing college, every mm -hmm. single assignment you gotta do, you needed to submit through a software that I would recognize if you 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 copy it from any other place, yeah. and it would give you okay, this sentence is copied from this part and like pretty accurate one. So even if, if it just changes some words and, and put it in your assignment, they think you will catch it. With the AI right now, you won't because AI will create something completely new and they will never know. So 
And uh, one thing to mention here, because I want your help, Mark, to help uh, with the question that came from Vitor. I think you're going to be able to answer that quite easily. But just to wrap it up with AI. So I think it's a very risky to rely on AI 100% for something that's so personal, call it resume. Because yeah. you're going to have to talk about it and you have going to deliver if you get hired by that piece of paper, which is your product. The, the resume is your product and the interview is you selling that product. Yeah. So if there is no connection between the two, you can get yourself in trouble. But that's a conversation for another life. Marcos, you came from some of the financial uh, background, I, I know. Yeah. I will answer the question from Victor, but I wanted to, 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 to tap on it. So how was the process of building a financial vision about the taxes, laws, and economy in the country working in Canada? So, Vitor, from my perspective, I'm not good financially. I, I have some savings, but I, I, I think it's the culture. You learn how the culture here is. For example, instead of saving, sometimes it's better to spend it to build up your history. And then you're going to be able to buy things in the future because the market look at you and say, oh, this guy is a very good payer. He pays his bills and everything. Right. The way I learn about tax laws and this is just putting myself into trouble and see how it works. So right now I can navigate. But uh, I think if you have a financial plan, you're going to have a time to learn all those stuff as you go and you get into the culture. Max, what about you? What do you think? Well, I would say much easier here than uh, back in Brazil, especially I used to, to file my tax return back in Brazil, not only for me, but, but for my, my family, my, my mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. I still do it for my mother-in-law and much harder. Here is much easier. I do it myself as well. I only like, I had like only uh, help like twice because we opened like that, a different story because we opened a company and all that stuff. But now it, it's, uh, I know how to do it. So I'm doing it myself. Uh, so it's much more, uh, easier than Brazil in terms of tax return. In terms of financial, uh, uh, Michelle, you're right. Uh, here is the culture of credit, not the culture of how much money you have. doesn't matter how much money you have. It matters how much credit you can take from the bank. And you only build your credit by spending, by buying more stuff. Like the first thing, when I bought a car, uh, here, I spent like two, two and a half years without a car because I used to live close by the, the subway line. But then I decided to stay and said it would have like a second child. So I decided to buy a car. So I bought a car and it wasn't like an expensive one. But even though I decided to finance it, because then you start showing that you can owe the bank, but you, you're a good payer. You pay uh, all your your uh, debt, debt, right? And, and then also like to buy a card, you got to build your credit by borrowing money. Uh, that's one thing. And, and investment, to be honest, doesn't uh, generate a lot of uh, uh, interest. Interest is very, very low here. If you uh, uh, keep your money in the savings account, it's almost inexistent. So in terms of laws, then, then you learn as you go. I think it's important for you to 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 read about it, like to learn about it uh, before you come. But uh, as you go, start understanding more about the laws and the way it, it, it works. All right. Good. Thank you. Marks, now back to transition. We have 43 minutes here. I do want to respect sure. the time that you guys told me one hour here. So did you have any experience with transition, Kahir transition in Canada? If you ask no. what you can have to share. Oh, never. Never. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it would kill Michelle. Uh, yeah. No, I, I, yeah, I spent almost my entire career in the professional. I, I built my career in the professional services. I worked mm -hmm. with, I, I saw some comments from uh, Lincoln. Uh, I, we worked together. He was my client back in Brazil. Uh, and then after 18 years, I decided to, to move the, to the corporate side. And, and more towards IT related uh, type of uh, projects. Mm -hmm. and, and, and through this transition, Michelle, uh, I, I started talking to Michelle. Michelle had, had just started the, uh, the company and he helped me like uh, a lot, not only by 
making changes uh, on my resume, like putting together cover a cover letter. But also for me, I think the most important part was the interviews. So we did uh, preparation. He did like some research on the people that would uh, uh, interview me, and then doing like mock-up interviews. Uh, on the spot. On the spot. Huh? On the spot. On the spot. Yeah. Like <laughs> uh, Michelle, I have an interview tomorrow. So 9 p.m. We were like chatting. Well, tomorrow I would be lucky. Tomorrow I'll be lucky. <laughs> later. <laughs> I have an interview <laughs> later today. He <laughs> so was jumping. It was very uh, making himself available and like and, and trying to to poke on on my gaps, right? And that's the, the important part for you to prepare yourself to, for the worst. Then you you end up having like a, a like an easier interview. And I, I I joke with Michelle, make some jokes, like I make fun of it because sometimes I they ask questions that we spoke of already doing our mock-ups, and you know you gotta you gotta pretend that you oh <laughs> you're surprised oh let me think about a, a situation uh, yeah. that I. Yeah, and then you, but you were much more prepared. And I did it twice, and the show was always there and very, very helpful. And it was successful uh, to me for sure. Yeah, no, no, that's uh, thank you very much for 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 mentioning that. A, you got the job. B, people has to understand that my experience. I do like a uh, reverse engineering, so I'm not HR guy. I'm guy from IT. I've been working as a recruiter i worked as a manager so i can do see the 360 i can make predict or forecast at least the mindset and if you have that chances are you're going to be able to answer no matter when and how the question comes you know from where to get started all right so now let's talk about something here because uh, we need to share with people as well I remember I was talking to Otto, my first live uh, in this channel here. He said, Michelle, one thing I would do better uh, if I could have a chance before leaving home to go to Canada, do a kind of a transition handover with my friends and family. Not just uh, decide to go to Canada in January and in February me leaving. So give a time for you to disconnect from family and friends. What do you guys think about it? Did you do that? If yes, was it a good idea or not? Mm -hmm. For me, it was fast. Again, they decided in December I was here in May. Uh, family, like my parents, say, no, why, why are you doing this? I've never been in Canada before. I just came. And they said, no, don't do that. And it's hard when you put your kids away from your parents, like, and your sister and your cousins and all your friends. I'm not saying it's easy, uh, but uh, yeah, you got to do it. If, if you, what you want... You, you gotta do it. You gotta just cut the umbilical cord and do it. And again, my mom came here to visit them like two, two three times. My sister came. We went back there. Uh, with the technology today, we can talk FaceTime every single day and see each other. It, again, it's not the same to be present and hugging and kissing, but uh, it makes life way easier. Mm -hmm. How about you, Marx? Uh, for me, it was an e easier sell because uh, we were supposed to stay here only for two years and then go back to Brazil. So it was an easier uh, sell to the family, uh, especially my mother-in-law. I had to negotiate with her. <laughs> uh, she was very attached to us. Uh, but in the end, it's it's hard, right? It's hard. Like our friend, my uh, our friends came to the airport, you know, and uh, it was very hard. But as Sergio said, it's easier because of technology. Uh, I, I, I lived abroad before when I was 15, so you can imagine how much time ago. And it was much harder because even for like a telephone call was very expensive. So you didn't have like this uh, opportunity as you have today of like FaceTime and, and it, it makes life much easier for sure. Okay, another question now. If you could, be, could go back in the, in the time that you were planning to land here. So... Do or do you land here in Canada as a specialist or a generalistic to looking for your first job if you have to? How do you see the market nowadays? Is better for a specialist or generalistic? I would say there's opportunity for both. 
definitely. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think I think the market here is more for specialists. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, even like if you hire someone to paint your house, they're not gonna come here and do all the service. Like all they they're gonna send someone to come and tape it first, right? And then <laughs> the only does taping. And then the other person comes and only rolled, the, you know, to, to paint it. Uh, so it's very, very specific. And they, they, they always look for it. In Brazil, we tend to be more generalists, I would say. Uh, here is more like a market of specialists. And so I would compliment saying if you're entry level position generalist, as soon as you start growing the company and progressing, you gotta become more specialist and focus on that one thing that you know and be become an expert and master that 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 knowledge for sure. Yeah, one advice that I give to my clients is if you wanna be here as a generalistic, chances are you're gonna be competing with Canadians. Yeah, because Canada they like the idea the immigrant came here with a very skilled set toolbox. And the one important thing. I want to mention because I do know people are watching and it's important. I have seen specialists making much more than generalistic in this country. So if your English is not that good and if you know one technology, that may be your best bet in Canada. All right. So I have a couple of minutes more. So I took this book here from Victor. It's in French. Of course. Le Canada. Basically weird, but true in Canada. And I took one thing here because of Sergio. Sergio, do you know that the basketball was invented in, in, Massachusetts, in Massachusetts? By a Canadian. By a Canadian. Yeah. All right. So I know you like uh, Raptors very much. So now let's talk, try to talk about weird stuff here, maybe funny stuff. Right? So, Marx, you mentioned something in the beginning, but uh, for me, the, the, the most weird stuff... When I came here, it was a cultural shock. When you go to the office, you really want to shake hands, but nobody shakes hands with you. You just came. <laughs> hi, 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 hi. <laughs> and then after three months, you you <laughs> you are like this in the office. So for me, it was a very shock to do this. What about you guys? Do you guys have any example of a funny thing or weird stuff? Uh -huh. Not funny for me concerning like I'm a, I'm a gym guy and when I joined the gym here uh, there's no instructor there's no one you go by yourself if you want to you hire a personal trainer other otherwise it's you and you and you can you can go working out with your flip-flops with your jeans if you want to use like a dress shirt they don't care it's you if you damage yourself you get hurt it's on you mm -hmm. What about you, Marx? You don't like socialize, so maybe you didn't have any problem in Canada, right? <laughs> no, like uh, one thing, thinking about it, like the subway is so quiet. Nobody talks like in the morning <laughs> or even in the afternoon, like crowded, you know, and you can't hear a thing. Even with kids, right? The kids are like quiet and I like, I don't know how they do it. Because whenever we, we were at the subway, especially with my family, the kids were like crying and my wife was, what do you want? Everybody was looking. So, uh, but yeah. And, and the other thing was funny because uh, I remember the first uh, weeks here, you're like looking in downtown, like the, the, the big square crap. I say you, you look, sometimes look up and like several people came, uh, oh, hi, do you need any help? Do you need, like, <laughs> very and I wasn't asking for, for help and they, they were offering. So uh, it's funny and, and good in a sense. Right? Yeah, the other thing for me that was difficult to adjust because back home you, you study a lot, you work hard to get a career, study, you try to get into big organizations, right and then you start to have your ticket for your meal in brazil your lunch and if, and if it's a big big part of uh, 
benefit there you go special meal lunch goods and in here you have to bring a lunch box <laughs> not just that there are rules to use the lunch box depends where you're gonna work right so different microwaves yeah so it took me like six months to enjoy lunch again <laughs> <laughs> what about you guys how much how long did you take to adjust the lunch box lunch box uh, no i didn't have this problem uh it's, i don't know uh work i didn't have it uh at the beginning of the college i used to come home to have lunch after the classes so no i, I for me lunch was not a problem yeah, if it was I, I didn't notice i was just eating <laughs> Uh, to, to be honest, I don't I don't bring lunch to 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 work uh, a lot. Like I tend to buy something. What I changed is like instead of like sitting and having lunch for one hour in a restaurant, I just grab something like a sandwich, a soup, a salad, and eat like quickly eat it and go back to work. And I, you know, I I think sometimes easier you know just to go on and uh work if you, you you're even like you feel lighter right to work because whenever you have like a big lunch in the afternoon it's hard to concentrate right yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. I, 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 a nice thing to mention here regarding lunch but when i started here when you're hourly paid entry-level jobs you gotta pay by hour they don't pay your lunch time so uh -huh. you work like from eight to four and your half an hour lunch is not paid uh -huh. well, yeah, I didn't know so that. then you are not productive at all not really especially <laughs> with uh empty belly nope <laughs> <laughs> okay now let's talk about favorite place in here because last weekend i went to a museum called little canada have you heard about it i heard it yeah it's more stuff there everything uh replicas right everything small oh yeah downtown uh, so. miniature miniature yeah. of uh, all the cities and uh i was there and you Serge, came to mind because they really replicated toronto and uh the blue jays stadium the roofing mm -hmm. and everything right so it's amazing i really really recommend you to go but the reason i mentioned that is because i want to ask you Serge, if i have if you have two tickets to go blue jays or raptors which one you would go Raptors made the same sure. team the same the same time raptors, raptors for sure raptors, raptors. Yeah. No, basketball, yeah like basketball is much way more fun more, more fun more entertainment yeah. than uh the baseball baseball is good whenever you go to the box like a company box then it's a different story don't even watch the game you just you just eat, there eat. drink talk <laughs> what about you marks between the same day you have an invite Niagara Falls or CNE Tower? Niagara Falls. We go Niagara Falls because it's the the uh, the full day uh, a trip of a full day a full day of uh, trip, and you you can uh, it's 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 really wonderful there like the Niagara Falls and you can go and visit Niagara on the lake on the way to Niagara Falls. It's, it, that's also really amazing. And there's a lot of wineries there. And I love trying and, and taste some wine. <laughs> and it is important to mention to some of folks here. So there are places you don't pay. You just visit. Yeah. And you have a drink. Yes. Right? But it changed now. Now it's not like it was before. Now everything you gotta change, you gotta pay. Oh my goodness. Uh, and gonna... Yeah. The CN Tower, I recommend doing the edge walk. Edge walk, you walk outside of the of the tower, the tower. and you uh, lean forward and i've done it it's really interesting all right so we are on time here so that's good so it means we somehow got organized here so basically the last question for for you guys uh, i'm going to start with marcus marks uh, for people who are still thinking scratching their head about going coming to canada where we are so what would be your best advice so yeah prepare your cash flow really try to uh, uh estimate correctly uh don't don't like you you gotta pay everything uh in cash or like you, you cannot do installments finance anything only cars and you're not gonna have credit uh 
Uh, the other thing is uh, embrace the winter. Embrace the winter. Winter is long, but it's nice. Uh, if you ski, if you ice skate, you know, and mm -hmm. if you find like uh, 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 places to go and take vitamin D because uh, not only the cold weather, you get like shorter days and it's hard for you to, to get vitamin D. So take vitamin D. I take vitamin D every single day and avoid nice. the flu, like having the blue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, what about you, Serge? What would be the best advice for people who are still thinking about Canada? I would say come. I love this place. And uh, planning is uh, planning is essential. Uh, and when I say planning, not only researching on internet places, uh, renting or institutions, whatever, but uh, planning financially. I think this is the most heavy part, the, the, the financial part and try to join join blogs join facebook community brazilian communities uh, try to uh, reach out people and start creating your online networking and asking you're not gonna say can i see your home but asking for advice i'm planning to go what do you recommend do you have an idea or asking questions and if you can rely on a, a company as a great snipe that i will give you all the advice i believe michelle again he's very professional he's trying to Whenever someone hire him, he's trying to position this person, get a job or train or whatever. But he's been here for almost 10 years. If you ask him a question, he won't say, no, you didn't pay for that. He will help you out. He's a very good, friendly guy. So I would say if you can afford, if you can, it's an investment. It's not an expense. It's an investment. And will, I think uh, if it's a race, you start like at least five clubbers in front of all other people that want to come to Canada. Yeah, an advantage for sure. That's right. So from my side, I'm going to wrap it up saying to folks who are watching us, celebrate every small victory if you want to come to Canada. Because the big ones are going to take you a long time to make it. It doesn't matter if you land with a job because you're going to have higher expectations. If you bought a college because you're going to have uh, short in terms of money because you are already investing. Or if you land like me with your PR, it doesn't matter. If you don't, celebrate small victory you're gonna look and say it doesn't make sense why i'm here give time and every single no we're gonna face in canada you're gonna be closer to yes and i keep saying that to people when they go through interviews sometimes they do an amazing job three four interviews a very good experience but they don't get the job and there's always a reason sometimes we never know why but it doesn't mean you didn't win. You won. You won experience. You got to know the process better. You got to network with people. So once again, come to Canada, but come with the mindset that every single win you have to celebrate. And for me today, particularly speaking here, it's another win because I remember when I started my first live, I looked, took a week for me to prepare this one. I just invited you guys and boom, ready to go. So then I'm so happy to be here. And I hope to do more of those lives because I do like the idea to share experience. Knowledge we have everywhere, but experience is something that either you know somebody or you're going to rely on a business that has been around and has gone through all the nightmare that perhaps you, potential immigrant, are going to face in Canada. So as Sergio said, there is an investment. And the investment in your career, in your future, and I think there's no better place to put your investment than in your career. Sergio and Marcos, I hope to see you guys soon, one of those days. So this Saturday, I'm going to do my first ice skating with Victor. So it's going to be in Vaughn here. It's going to be indoor. We are preparing and, and, and everything for the winter season that we love. And thank God we have the condition to do that. And that's one of the best way to make sure you can stay alive during six months of the month which is not easy at all. Thank you, guys. Any final consideration? Well, thank you. Thank you for the invitation. It was a pleasure. Uh, hopefully, see you guys around a barbecue at the Club de Campo Marica. <laughs> all right. So, well, yeah, I'm going to wait the barbecue uh, this week. Uh, oh, come on. Waiting for the, for the first snow uh, that, that came. Uh, but I learned that, uh, and I did in a friend's house that, uh, 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 picanha in the air fryer and was really good. So, 
We so the golden so era, the golden moment, the romantic era where we have Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays consistently, that's over, Sergio. So in Canada, it's always like that, my friend. You get, you get something, but you lose something. Well, there is no way for you to have the full package in this country here. So with that being said, thank you very much, and uh, I hope to see you guys around one of those days. Thank you. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye-bye.